So hello everyone, I'm JM, this is the Lotus Diaries, and this is the first real sort of ownership related update I would say. I've had a lot of requests from people wanting to know about the realities and the sort of more mundane I suppose stuff about living with this kind of car, or this specific car. Today was the running in service, I had this performed by Stratton Motor Company, main reason being that they are pretty much my nearest full on certified Lotus dealer. They're basically the closest dealer to the Lotus factory. Now I had a few issues that I identified with the car in the first kind of week of ownership. They were a slightly rattly window, they were an off-centre steering wheel, and they were a sound system which didn't sound very good, and also a creaky seat. Now, I managed to fix the window rattle myself in about 30 seconds with a little bit of auto glim bumper and trim gel. Stratton have managed to fix several of my problems. They fixed the steering wheel not being centered, that was just the tracking being slightly out, and it's very possible that that happened while the car was being transported. In any case, it was only slightly out, but because Lotus fit this car with a 12 o'clock marking on the steering wheel, it's fairly obvious. And the next thing on the list was the creaky seat. I was getting to be quite annoying whenever I went around a sort of right-hand bend. There was an awful metallic noise coming from the left-hand side bolster on the driver's seat that definitely didn't sound right. Stratton looked into this for me and it seems that when the seat was removed to be painted it was put back in and one of the bolts had been cross-threaded so basically the seat was twisting ever so slightly whenever I went around a corner. Obviously that's not a good thing. Uh, they re-threaded the hole, refitted the seat and I hope the noise is gone. If it hasn't you will certainly know about it. It's in a little thing but it was kind of annoying and one thing to point out is that some of these creaks and rattles some people might put down to, oh it's just a hand-built little British sports car, they do that, well no they don't. The Lotus is made to a very high standard so if the car is creaking or rattling very often it's something that should be rectified and sorted. I was also told that with the thousand mile service a large part of it is just to make sure that the car has been put together correctly, that there are no teeny issues which have come through and I'm pleased to say that this car passed with flying colours. There were no issues to report whatsoever. I didn't think that there would be but it's had a thorough going over and I'm glad that it has. Uh, the final issue to be sorted was the subwoofer not working. So the car's got four speakers in the front and it's got one, they call it a subwoofer, but it's just a larger speaker in the rear on the right hand side. That speaker to me sounds like it's not connected or has blown or something along those lines. Now Stratton looked into it and they would agree with me. Unfortunately to get to the speaker requires a removal of a fair amount of the interior and there wasn't enough time to do that today. So they're going to take the car back in about a week and get that fixed. Now, the sound quality of the car stereo is something that's actually quite important to me. Now, I know there's some guys out there that'll say when you've got a car that sounds that great, why would you even bother turning the stereo on and all that kind of stuff? Well, to some extent I agree, but if you're on a particularly long journey or a particularly boring one and you aren't able to hear the exhaust doing its lovely thing, then having a really good stereo is quite nice. I'm an audiophile, I have a nice stereo set up at home and I like to be able to enjoy music to a reasonable standard when I'm in the car. That being said, the Lotus is standard set up and there are no optional stereo upgrades in the car. It's actually much, much better than I had expected it to be. Uh, at the minute it's sounding slightly tinny, but I've heard them with the rear speaker working properly and actually they're really surprisingly good. And uh, In fact, I would say it's better than some of the upgrade stereos I've heard from other manufacturers. Stratton were brilliant to deal with. They're very professional, very courteous. They offer you either a hire car or a lift to Norwich or you can sit in the showroom, enjoy all the metal that's in there and have a few beverages on them. Yep, sounds like the creek is gone, which is really, really nice. That definitely would have creaked before. I do want to do a video in the near future focusing on some of the more technical aspects of the car. Hopefully that will be of interest to some of you guys that are a bit more engineering minded. I want to go into some of the things that Lotus do differently, some of the sort of engineering principles behind the car and the reasons why it's as good to drive as it is. Because ultimately, although you sort of have a feel and a passion for things, behind it all is solid, good science and engineering principles. So the first service basically involves the changing of all the oil. They change it from a running in fluid to a full proper oil. They also do a full visual inspection of the car, make sure everything's performing as it should be. And for this service, I've just paid £147, including VAT. Now what you're paying for is the cost of materials. Lotus will pay the cost of the labour to the dealership. That's pretty fair. Overall, I remain extremely happy with the car. One thing a lot of people have asked me is, could you really use the car every day? 
I'm going to go into this in more detail in another video, but in short, absolutely, you certainly could. If you think that an R8 or a 911 would suit your daily needs, then the Evora 400 definitely would too, and so would an early Evora as well. I can't think of any reason why you couldn't really use this car on a daily basis unless you happen to live somewhere with a very, very, very steep car park, or you just simply needed to fit four adults in it every day. For a sports car or supercar, whatever you want to call it, it's very easy to drive. Pretty practical as well because you've got the rear seats you can use as a small storage area and you've got a moderately sized boot in the back as well. We've got quite a few more videos in the pipeline. I'm editing about three more right now. I'm very grateful as always to everybody that's subscribed, liked and commented on the videos and I ask you to keep doing so. Tell me what you want to see in future videos and I'll see if I can include it. I'll be doing a Q&A as soon as I've got enough questions together. Until then, I hope you enjoy all the videos that I've made. If you haven't watched it already, please watch my pure driving video. If you want less waffle and more sounds from the engine and the car and the exhaust and all that sort of stuff, some good roads, that's the video to watch. That's going to be an ongoing series. Whenever I find a decent road, I'll try and set the cameras up and get it on film. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye now.